More than a dozen killed, many more injured. New right now, Belgian officials were confirming it was a suicide attack. And just miles away, smoke pouring out of a busy metro station and people run away in terror after a third bomb goes off on the tracks. That is our top story right now. Good morning, Michiana. I'm Drew Gardner. Emily Evans has the morning off. Let's get right over to ABC's Bazi Kanani in Washington with those just breaking details. It's now 637 terror spreading through Europe again this morning when three bombs go off in crowded public places. The death toll climbing this morning as investigators scramble to lock the city down to find out who's responsible. We're staying on top of breaking news in Brussels. New right now, the global stock markets crash after twin blasts inside the airport terminal. Belgian officials confirmed those attacks were triggered by suicide bombers. Another attack happened moments later at a Molenbeek metro station. In all, local media reporting 23 people have been killed. Now, if you're just joining us, here's what we know so far. The attackers have targeted Brussels, significant for a few reasons. It's the European capital of the world symbolizing the West. It's also the same city where one of the wanted suspects in the Paris terror attacks was caught hiding out just days ago. At this hour, all flights in and out of Brussels airport have been canceled. All metro stations are closed. Brussels and other major European hubs like Paris and London have raised their terror threat levels. Breaking overnight, officials identified two suspects who blew themselves up inside the Brussels airport. And the manhunt continues for a bombing suspect who made it out alive. We will stand up to them and we will stand by our values. The U.S. remains on high alert with a beefed up police presence at transportation hubs in major cities. Our coverage on this deadly terror attack starts now. We are on top of breaking news. Police have identified two suspected suicide bombers as brothers. Good morning, Michiana. I'm Emily Evans. And I'm Drew Gardner. Police have identified two brothers suspected in the bombings at the airport. There's still one man spotted in surveillance video who didn't die in the explosions. The raids are underway right now. ABC's Molly Hunter is in Brussels now with more. Breaking overnight gunfire and explosions turn a French neighborhood into a war zone. Police swarm an apartment in a Paris suburb. Three terror suspects are dead and three more arrested. The mastermind behind the deadly attacks in Paris, the target of the raids. Developing right now, is he dead or alive? Fourth of July fun got out of control on a popular Michiana beach. Now some families are fed up saying they're not coming back. Plus, one man is dead after a fireworks display goes terribly wrong. Neighbors on his block say there was one thing that made it extra dangerous. Anna, this is ABC 57 News at 6. Well, right now, a 25-year-old man is in police custody facing charges of sexual misconduct with a minor, a teenage girl 10 years younger. And that is our top story tonight here on ABC 57 News at 6. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kim Chappell. And I'm Brian Dorman. Tonight, a Mishawaka High School staffer is in police custody. Here's a look at him. 25-year-old Ryan Mooch was arrested this morning for sexual misconduct with a Mishawaka High School freshman. Tonight, we have special team coverage. ABC 57's Jasmine Norwood is live at Mishawaka High School, where she found students who say they are shocked that something like this could happen at their school. And ABC 57's Alexandra Cohen is also live for us tonight near Holy Cross College, where Mooch was also a baseball coach. A breaking news that is just coming into our newsroom, obviously, here tonight. Moments ago, South Africa's former president, Nelson Mandela, has died. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Dorman. And I'm Kim Chappell. Just to give you a little recap of the impact that this 95-year-old made in his lifetime, he is the former president of South Africa. He was in the hospital for most of this past summer with a reoccurring lung infection. And back here at home right now, ABC 57 is on top of two breaking news scenes. We have reporters live at the scene of a shooting in South Bend and on all of street. Also, we are live tonight in Fulton County where a semi has crashed right into a home. Well, you may have noticed today that your town is getting back to normal after one of the worst winter storms in years, but those in Benton Harbor are still buried. Plus all that snow coupled with a huge temperature swing means the ground is about to get super saturated. How you can prepare for possible flooding this weekend. And ABC 57 News is digging deeper into a droid ride in an unmarked South Bend police car. How is the department reacting after a detective was caught pulling around kids? 
dangerously close to those cars tires. Good evening everyone. I'm Kim Chappell and I'm Brian Dorman. Tonight we have special extreme weather team coverage. Our reporters and weather team has your first warning about a big temperature swing. We are talking 50 degree difference in one week. Tonight, ABC 57's Amanda Sorrentino is out in Elkhart talking to people that are preparing for the snow to melt. They are bracing for possible flooding there. And Daryl Bajoris live for us in Benton Harbor where the warm up just can't come fast enough. And after this week's winter storm and frigid Arctic air, mid 30s, but the warmer air is beginning to melt the mountains of snow out there. And many emergency management officials are warning now of flooding. ABC 57's Amanda Starantino joins us live from Elkhart. Countless survival stories are rising from the rubble in Kokomo. Now this is another loss for me, but with the help of the Lord, I'm going to make it. I will make it because my faith is strong and I will make two powerful tornadoes rip through the town, leaving families with little but the clothes on their backs. Our ABC 57 News crew has been on the scene since last night with live reports from some of those hardest hit areas and towns across Michigan are still in the dark. No lights, no heat, how they're coping when the temperatures plummet tonight. Those survival stories continue to flood in from hard hit Kokomo. The National Weather Service confirmed today two EF2 tornadoes hit that town about the size of Elkhart. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kim Chapel. Brian Dorman is on assignment tonight in Kokomo. We do have storm team coverage for you with our ABC 57 reporters live in Mishawaka, Benton Harbor and in South Bend. But we start in Kokomo where the damage is by far the worst. The National Weather Service so far confirming at least seven tornadoes across Indiana on Sunday. Two of those carved a path straight through Kokomo. Both tornadoes ripped with winds of up to 135 miles per hour. Now, no one died in those storms incredibly, but several dozen people were injured. And that is where our special coverage begins tonight with my co-anchor Brian Dorman. He joins us live in Kokomo off of US 31 on the south side of town. Brian. Kim, the damage is as far as you can see here tonight in Kokomo and in each home there is a story, a story of survival and tonight perhaps you're going to hear the greatest yes. one. The sun is setting, the temperatures dropping and families are scrambling tonight to stay warm. Tonight ABC 57's Jasmine Norwood joins us live with the progress being made in Benton Harbor. Jasmine. Well, Kim, the power is still out here for many people and trees are down all over the city. I'm going to walk behind the camera really quickly because I do want to show you just how bad some of the damage is in this area. You can see several trees are knocked down and when these trees fell, they took power lines with them, leaving thousands of people here in Benton Harbor without power. Now, as you can see, it's very well lit in here with the natural light, but the lighting is not the problem. The bigger issue is the temperature. This app on my phone says it's only 39 degrees in here, and it's going to get much colder tonight. And there's a lot of cleanup still going on across the area. In fact, we sent our own Alexander Cohen out in Mishawaka to check on some of the storm damage and the big cleanup that's going on right now. What are you seeing out there? And take a look at this. A huge tree brought power lines down at the intersection of East Donald and Hoke Street last night. It's now 551. Sushi lovers tend to have more adventurous palates, willing to try uncooked foods some people might think are kind of scary. But restaurant goers weren't prepared for this sushi scare. And today, many in Michiana community will be paying their final respects to Father Theodore Hesburgh. He made it his mission to change not only the University of Notre Dame, but also South Bend, the world, and the Catholic Church. Our special coverage today starts with ABC 57's Brandon Pope joining us live from the Basilica of the Sacred Heart. Brandon, it's the start of a pretty difficult day there for many. Well, definitely, Drew, today is a day for grieving, not just for Notre Dame, but the entire country. And as you can see over here, we have an EMT crew. Someone, I'm being told, has passed out inside and needs oxygen. That's why they're here. So emotions really hard to come by for a lot of folks here in Notre Dame, as they say, their final goodbyes to Father Theodore Hesburgh this morning. Now, many people stayed up late and got out early to get down here to the Basilica to say their final goodbyes, and that's all going to end here in just about a few hours at 10 o'clock this morning. The funeral mass is going to be right after in the same place right here at the Basilica. Uh, it is invitation only, but this afternoon on ABC 57, we're going to bring you inside the Basilica for the funeral mass. Coverage starts at 145, and if you aren't an expert on the Catholic faith, no worries. 
Father Daryl Rabiki will be in studio to break down the service with our own Brian Dorman. A procession to the burial site will immediately follow the mass from Basilica of the Sacred Heart to Holy Cross Community Cemetery. It's about a six minute walk and if you would like to stand along that processional route, you're welcome to do so. Your best spot to hang out would be along St. Mary's Road and on Holy Cross Drive near Corby Hall. The celebration of Father Hesburgh wraps up tonight with a memorial tribute at Purcell Pavilion. You've got to have a ticket to attend that. It starts at 730 tonight with special guest speakers who include former President Jimmy Carter and former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Now, if you don't have a ticket, we will be broadcasting the service on ABC 57 uh, live there. And also we're going to broadcast the memorial tribute on the CW 25. I'm going to have more information on that coming up in the next half hour. I'm live in Notre Dame this morning. Brandon Pope, ABC 57 News. Include former President Jimmy Carter and former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Now, if you don't have a ticket, we will be broadcasting the service on ABC 57 uh, live there. And also we're going to broadcast the memorial tribute on the CW 25. I'm going to have more information on that coming up in the next half hour. I'm live in Notre Dame this morning. Brandon Pope, ABC 57 News. The Grotto of Our Lady of Lords has been full of students, staff, and people from across Michiana. They've been paying their respects to Father Ted since his death Thursday night. Hundreds of candles have been burning since the news of his death, and the church choir could be heard singing in the background last night. Many mourners made their way from the visitation at the Basilica down to the Grotto. And there's a long list of services for Father Hesburgh today. As we mentioned, you can pay your respects at a public visitation through 10 o'clock this morning at the Basilica of the Sacred Heart. There will also be a public memorial service held after today's funeral at 730 at Purcell Pavilion. The funeral again is by invite only. It will though be streamed online or you can watch it live right here. And right now we are starting with breaking news happening out of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., where a car chase from Capitol Hill to the White House ends with gunfire. The Capitol building was locked down and now at least two people are in the hospital, including a police officer. Right now, the lockdown order has been lifted. Capitol Hill is settling back to normal after some very wild moments here this afternoon. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Dorman and I'm Kim Chapel. There is a female suspect. She is dead after she tried ramming the White House gate. Right now, ABC 57's Karen Travers is live in Washington with the very latest. Good evening. Law enforcement officials say this was an isolated incident, not related to terrorism. Now we have a team of reporters that are out and about here. Got you covered all across Michiana tonight. Let's begin our team coverage with ABC 57's Jesse McDonough. She is live just off of the toll road for us in St. Joseph County to talk about the latest from Indiana State Police. Jesse. Brian, I hopped on the toll road and headed west, and the road conditions were pretty bad. I was seeing slide offs everywhere, as well as a few accidents. Now, these roads on the toll road are actually so bad that the Indiana State Police decided to cancel all off days within the next few days for this storm. And one of the biggest concerns tonight is the fact that many of you may perhaps lose power. Of course, it depends on how strong the winds are tonight. Erica Putt with Indiana Michigan Power joined us just a few minutes ago by phone to tell us that INM is looking pretty good. Just a handful of outages right now in Dewajak as well as South Bend. To touch on that tonight, my co-anchor Kim Chapel is live on 36th Street in South Bend just with some words of advice for you tonight in the event that you should lose power. Kim. Well, Brian, I got to tell you, it is bitter cold out here and getting colder with each minute. The wind really starting to pick up, and I'll tell you, when it hits you in the side of your face, you sure can feel it. And that wind is a concern for power crews as they brace and prepare for this storm. Here is their biggest concern right now. It's this snow that you can see piling up on branches, but it's not the ones that are low to the ground, of course, that they're concerned about. It's the ones up here, close to those power lines all across the region. All it's going to take is that snow piling up and one strong wind gust for them to have a power outage on their hands and the family inside, of course, left in the dark, in the cold, in this bitter cold snow system. Now, I do have some last-minute tips. You're probably wondering why I've got chocolate syrup in my hand here. We wanted to bring you some last-minute tips as these cold temperatures, the coldest in 20 years, move into the Michiana area. First of all, right here, don't forget to make a plan. It is still not too late. Have a friend, have a family member, someone that can be expecting guests in case your power does go out. Also, right now, don't forget, again, not too late, right here. 
charge your cell phones, charge your computers, your tablets. Be prepared to rely on those devices should your power go out and you need to get in touch with people. Now, lastly, another tip we want to give you. This one's coming from NIPSCO right down here. Never, ever use your oven or your stove. We're going to put a big X through that.